All right, this is lesson 7.1, BC Calculus. And we want to deal with improper integrals. So an integral is called improper if one or both limits of integration are infinite. So you'll see one there and a couple there. And then also the function has an infinite discontinuity. In other words, a vertical asymptote at or between the limits. And so if we look at all of these examples, why are they improper? So if you look at number one, that one has an infinite limit of integration. So that would be an improper integral. Okay. And then number two, same thing. We have two of them, so it also has an infinite limit. So two would be improper as well. Number three might not be as obvious, and this is where, well, we're talking about this right now, so people know that we're talking about it, so we're looking for it. But when you get into the realm of not looking for it, and all these integrals are mixed together, then you do have to be on your toes to figure out when this does happen. So if I take this limit, 1, and plug it in here, I do have a point of discontinuity at x equal to 1. Vertical asymptote, and so that is what we're going to have, an infinite discontinuity at or between the limits. So the vertical asymptote tells us that we are improper. Now looking at number four, what's with that one? Well, this is different a little bit, but it is uh, undefined at x equal to negative one. We're undefined at that point. And so is that in between these two limits? And the answer is yes. And so we have a vertical asymptote in between the two limits, so this would also be improper. So those are the things you're looking for when you're dealing with these. We have to treat them a little bit different. We might have to split this one up. In fact, we will. And then the ones with infinite limits, we'll have to use limits in order to sort them out. So let's get to some examples. So number one, and what's interesting to me is that, hey, we can take something that goes off to infinity. It's kind of an infinite amount of region that we're trying to figure out. And does that equal a certain amount? And so we're going to try to evaluate this one. And so we start off by changing the upper limit to a B. And we're going to put this limit out in front. We have to do this limiting process. It's just more proper for us to do it that way. And so this is how we're going to do a rewrite. Then from there, we're going to just take the antiderivative and work off it like we do normally. So if I take this. This is x to the negative 2, right? So it's x to the negative 1 all over negative 1. And I'm going to evaluate that from 1 to b. Now I'm also going to still have this limit that we got to carry along. So now I'm going to plug in, just as we did before, the b. So it's negative 1 over b minus, if I plug in 1, it's just going to be negative 1 minus negative 1, which turns out to be plus, and so that's what we have. Now we're going to evaluate this limit. And so to evaluate this limit, this is 1 over a big. 1 over a big is going to be a very small. So we're just going to end up with 1. Whoa! This thing goes on forever here, and it is a exact amount of 1 for its area, even though the curve goes on forever. That is pretty cool. Now, example number 2. Oh, this one's it's kind of the same. It goes on forever. So we're probably going to get a, an exact value for this one, too. So we go limit as b goes to infinity from 1 to b of 1 over x dx. Evaluate that. Oh, I got ln x. So that's going to be a little bit different. And this is going to be from 1 to b. And then also continue on with your limit because we do have to evaluate the limit. Now put in the upper limit and the lower limit. Like so. This is going to be 0. And then this, what happens if I take and put in infinity into ln b? That's going to be ln infinity, which just is infinity. So when this happens, we do not get a sum. 
There is no area of value that we can find for this because it will keep on increasing forever. So we say that this diverges. This limit does diverge, or this definite integral in this area does diverge. So in your instructions, it does say identify those that do diverge. So if the limit does not come out to be a number, goes off to infinity or negative infinity or something like that, then we're going to end up diverging. Okay, so this one, 3, might be, well, I don't know, let's see what happens. The limit as b goes to infinity of 0 to b cosine of x dx. Antiderivative of the cosine is the sine. So I'm going to go from 0 to b, still have my limit. And then I get the limit as b goes to infinity of sine of b minus sine of 0. Well, that goes to 0. So I'm just looking at this right here. Now, if you think about sine, sine goes like this. Does it ever converge to a specific value? And I think the answer, you, you know, it always is going to shift between negative 1 and 1. It does not. And so this does not land on one exact value as b goes to infinity. So this one also will diverge. So you got to look at a couple different situations there. This one goes off to infinity. This one bounces back and forth between 1 and negative 1, so that would also diverge. Number four, why don't you try this, pause this, and try this one. And if you notice, ooh, we got to deal with something a little bit extra here for the antiderivative, which you learned in unit six. Try it, and then come back and see what we do. So thanks for pausing. Now, when we set this one up, this one is integration by parts. So I do have my two parts here, my x and my e to the negative x. So I'm going to let u equal to x because I can break that down. And then dv is going to be equal to e to the negative x. So when I take the antiderivative, I'm going to end up with v is negative e to the negative x. So we do our ultraviolet voodoo. So we go x e to the negative x, so ultraviolet, and then voodoo is what the, I do need. So I'm going to go minus the integral, and we're going to take 1 to b of this negative e to the negative x dx. Now what do I forget here? I need the limit as b goes to infinity. I'm going to take the antiderivative here. I'm going to make this positive, make this positive. So I'm going to get the limit as b goes to infinity of negative x e to the negative x. And this is going to be plus. And then when I do this one, this is just going to be antiderivative of negative e to the negative x. And I'm going to evaluate that from 1 to b. So if I plug in the b, this is what happens when I plug in the b. This is what happens when I plug in the 1 into each one of these respective parts. So I'm doing the upper limit minus the lower limit. Now I can take b and put it to infinity. This is in division, but that's what I'm doing. And so b going to infinity, well, what grows faster here? A b or e to the b? Well, I think you know that it's going to be e to the b, so that's going to be 0 minus 0 and then minus, these things are irrespective of b, so then that would be actually a plus 2 over e. 1 plus 1 is 2, and then I end up with a positive there. So this goes to 2 over e. That's what it will converge to, 2 over e. Okay, number 5. Why is this improper integral? I think we have to answer that one first. So if we look at this, we're going to have a vertical asymptote at x equal to 0. When we have that vertical asymptote at x equal to 0, that does squeeze in between those two limits. So we're going to have to split this up into two parts. And so this is going to be equal to negative 1 to 0 of dx over x cubed. And I'm going to add 0 all the way to 2 of dx over x cubed. All right, so this is splitting it up over that vertical asymptote. Now, if you notice, we're going to have a problem here, though, when 
x is equal to 0, so we're going to have to do a limiting process on that. So how we write this is going to be the limit as b approaches 0. Now which side are we approaching 0 at for this piece? Well, we start at negative 1, we go up to 0, so it's going to be from the left side. And then we're going to have the definite integral. So we did the limit as b goes to 0 from the left side, negative 1 to b, of the integrand that we do have there. Now we have to do the other side. Well, that's the lower limit, so we're going to call the lower limit a, just for convention. And then how are we approaching 0? Well, that's going to be from the right side, because I'm going from 0 to 2. So that's going to be beyond that. And so to finish this up, we're going to go from a up to 2 of dx over x cubed. Now what I can do is I can go ahead and take these antiderivatives and evaluate these with b. So taking the antiderivative and doing the setup, I get this piece and I get this piece. Now to go on, we plug in the b and plug in the negative 1 here, and then we plug in the 2 and the a here. Plugging in these limits, if I plug in the b, that's just straightforward there. And then plugging in the negative 1, when I subtract, that's going to make this thing become a positive. And so then I'm going to end up with the 1 half, if I just plug in the 1 there. And then I got plus the limit as a approaches 0 from the right-hand side of this one. So I'm going to plug in the 2. So this would be negative 1 over 2. And then this would be 2 squared. So I'm going to get 2 squared in the denominator minus whatever happens when I plug in a. So it's going to be positive 1 half. And then it would be a squared, like that. And don't forget to put your limit in there as well. So that's what we end up having. And so if I look at this left-hand side, 0, this would be, this term right here would be 1 over a very small. It doesn't matter if the negative is there or not. 1 over a very small is a very big. So this is going to go off to infinity, namely negative infinity. And then if we look over here, this is negative 1 eighth. And really, I don't have to do any more because this one's going to go 1 over a big 2. So this would be over plus infinity. This one I can't determine. And so what we say then is that this one would diverge. Because the negative infinity and the positive infinity, I don't have enough information to see how they do converge. They don't. So if we don't get a clear-cut result here, then we will say diverge. Sometimes you can cancel off different terms and different things like that, but in this case, we cannot. All right, so that is 7.1, evaluating improper integrals. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.